morning everybody. It is Monday morning, what, October 27th. Um, I'm still on my way up north. Um, if you watched Friday's video, then you know the load I picked up Friday going up to Linwood, Washington. Um, I had to make a delivery time for a delivery appointment. My appointment wasn't until the earliest I could get it was 11 a.m. So normally I'd be coming through here at 6 o'clock in the morning or something in the dark. Um, but it's 8.30. Um, daylight. Traffic's actually better now at 8.30 than it usually is when I come through at 5.30 or 6. Um, coming through Tacoma right now. So I guess that's good. I left myself, um, it was what, 185 miles from the yard to where I'm delivering, so I think in a car, that's what, three hours of driving, right? I gave myself five and a half hours to get there um, because of like Seattle traffic, I don't know what it's going to be like this time of day, I'm usually up here much earlier, so I know sometimes heading when I'm done in Seattle, I've already got here, delivered, reloaded somewhere and heading south, uh, northbound is super backed up, and it'll be like 10, 10, 30 in the morning, so, um, really, like I said, I just gave myself a lot of extra time, uh, because I don't know what Travis is going to be doing. Uh, according to my GPS, I should get to my destination about 9.30, which will be an hour and a half early for my 11 o'clock appointment, but I'd rather be early than late. And also, I won't get there at 9.30, there's going to be, for sure, traffic slowing me down, you know, no matter what. Even if traffic's not bad, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be plenty of traffic going to be together, so, uh, so, I won't be that bad. But, anyways, um, hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, I had a good weekend. Uh, went on a nice long walk with my wife, just uh, me and my wife and our youngest baby who's three months old. And we went for like a, I don't know, three mile walk just kind of snaking all over our neighborhood. Just kind of get away from the uh, three older kids. Uh, so that was fun. We went to something for uh, a harvest party, I guess, for our uh, 10 year old daughter is a competitive cheerleader. The gym she goes to had a uh, harvest party thing on Saturday, so we did that on Saturday. The only, I think, low spot of the weekend, you know, I told you in Friday's video I was going to take the, take the semi home and place the airline and do some other things to it. So, since I got off so early Friday, I did that, I took it home on Friday, um, did everything I wanted to do to it on Friday, um, so I was done with all that Friday afternoon, early evening, decided I'd wait until Saturday to take the truck back to the yard because it was the hurry. So Saturday, midday or whatever, I take the semi back to the yard and hook it up the trailer so it's ready for the day and uh, when I got there I saw the front strap on my trailer just blowing in the wind uh, that strap was holding my tarps down on the trailer but there was no more tarps on the trailer so somebody probably in the middle of the night Friday came through and stole my tarps so that's a uh, bucks or something that uh, I get to work for that somebody else gets to have the tarps. So that wasn't cool, but what can you do? I mean, I feel bad for people that uh, decide or, or make the choice to live their life that way. I'll buy myself some more tarps and carry on and keep a positive attitude. There's nothing I can do about it now anyway, so the only person I'm hurting by getting all upset about it is me, right? Um, and those around me that are affected by, you know, me if, if I get down about it, so... Um, 
So yeah, that was a bummer. That's, you know, money that I work hard to make that I get to just throw away because my brand new tarps that I've used twice got stolen off my truck. Well, my trailer anyways. So I've learned a lesson, which is um, the best takeaway from it. Um, either I won't be leaving my tarps on the trailer like that anymore, or if I do, I'll chain them down and then uh, wrap the chain around the binder and padlock it so that you can't undo it. And then I can't get my tarps. Um, something. Either way, that won't happen again. Um, I'll take responsibility for allowing my stuff to get stolen and I'll put a corrective action in place to prevent it from happening again. So, anyways. I'm going to carry on. I've got uh, 43 miles to my destination. Um, which, and part of that 43 miles involves going right through downtown Seattle. So, this scale's open. It's never open. It must be because I'm coming up here so late. Um, so, I'm going to cruise on through the the heart of Seattle on I-5, and um, get to where I'm going, and then sit and wait. Ooh, I'm actually getting called into the scales, so anyways, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. So I'm here at my delivery, sitting in the street waiting. I got here right about, I don't know, it was probably 10 minutes till 10. So I'm all checked in. It's... 10.01 now, so I've got about an hour. Uh, there's a truck in there untying right now, which I'm guessing is the 10 o'clock appointment. There's a truck in the street ahead of me, which I'm guessing is 10.30. And then I'm here, which is obviously 11 o'clock. So I think everybody that's ahead of me is here. Um, now it's just, just wait. The guy that just pulled in is untying and whatnot. So It'll probably be a little bit before he gets out of here, and then the guy in front of me, the, I'm guessing the 1030, it looks like he only has one pick, and he's already untied, he already untied it, he's sitting out in the street, uh, he was untying when I pulled up. So, I'm guessing he's going to be pulling, they lift it off, sign his paperwork, he's out. So, um, so hopefully they'll get to me early, because the earlier they start on me, the earlier I'm empty, the earlier I get another load, and ultimately the earlier I can get back home, or or whatever, if I'm not going home. More than likely, the way things usually go, I'll just end up getting a load going back to Portland or something. Deliver in the morning, and hopefully I'll get a Canada load after that. Um, I want a Canada load, but we'll see. Um, which, speaking of, of that, uh, somebody that I went to grade school with got a hold of me on Facebook last night, asked if I was leased to the company that I'm leased to, and uh, I said yes, and so she told me that her husband is actually leased to the same company as well, and that he goes to Canada and whatnot, so I thought that was interesting. So I've got like an hour to sit here, probably screw around on my phone for a little bit, maybe make something to eat. I got a new pot for boiling water, because that one I've had just takes too, too darn long. I can't wait that long. Um, it's like a half hour to get the water boiling, so I bought another one at Costco. It's like 20 bucks, and uh, it boils water in three minutes or something, five minutes. Depends on how much water you put in it. The amount that I put in it for a cup of noodles, it'll boil it in like three minutes um, to fill it full, which is a lot of water. Um, it takes like five or six minutes. I was testing it out at home yesterday. Um, and so maybe I'll make some noodles or something, I don't know. I bought a fruit nut medley from Costco yesterday. Never had it before. Figured I'd give it a try on my way up. Something to snack on that's kind of healthy. Kind of weird. I don't love most of it, but I'm not. I don't know. I'll try to make myself get used to it. We'll see. Anyhow, I'm going to play around on my phone, sit here and wait, wait for my turn to pull in, and um, I'm sure I'll talk at you in a bit. 
So I'm finally empty at uh, where I delivered. I had an 11 o'clock appointment. They pulled me in at, I don't know, 11.45. Uh, it only took them like 10 minutes to unload me once they got me in. I just left there. It's noon exactly right now. Um, I just left there about five minutes ago. I had to kind of snake my way through some neighborhood roads to get out to a main road where I'm just about to get on I-5 heading south. Um, I'm thinking I spoke too soon Friday. Uh, if you watched Friday's video, which would have been the last video I posted, <clears throat> I talked about how um, I keep hearing that we're slow, things are slowing down, and I haven't seen any effects of that. Well, there's no load for me right now. So, uh, there's a lot more freight south of, of where I'm at. I'm up in Linwood, Washington right now. Uh, which is north of uh, Seattle. Um, oh, I shouldn't be in this lane. I followed that semi because, well, I guess you can't see. <laughs> There's a semi in front of me and I followed him, assuming he knew where he was going. Um, the on-ramp splits in two. One of the parts is a uh, carpool lane, and one is uh, the normal ramp, and we split off into the carpool lane. Anyways, um, so there's a lot more opportunities for freight farther south than where I'm at. Um, I guess there's other people ahead of me in line that were empty down there that are still waiting for loads anyways, but uh, she's having me head, head south. Head, head down there and then get a hold of her from down there like I said there's just there's no load for me down there yet but there's a lot better odds that there will be a load down there than waiting up here for one um, so so we'll see what happens um, she said there's a possibility she could just bring me all the way back to Vancouver empty uh, on one hand whatever I'll take it um, you know, as far as my paycheck goes, it's not going to, well, it will affect the amount I get paid because it affects the overall gross for the truck, which I just pay myself a percentage of the gross. Um, more than anything, it affects my business because I'm burning a whole lot of fuel going almost 200 miles back to the yard empty. Um, you know, 200 miles, actually it's about 180 mile amp. According to my GPS, I just put the yard address in. Um, to start heading that way. Um, so the yard is where my GPS is, is looking at. It's 180 miles from where I'm at now. So if you figure six miles per gallon, that's 30 gallons of fuel, and you know, we'll just say $4 a gallon, although it's about $3.50 now. But that's, you know, we'll just say 100 bucks in fuel. Um, that I'm spending <laughs> for nothing. There's no load on the truck. So, I'm spending $100 on fuel, potentially, to go back empty, um, so that's alright, I mean, that's that's part of the gig, so I'm not complaining about it, just, uh, I guess, letting you guys see that side of it, um, especially this time, so flatbedding, in general, is very heavily centered around, like, the construct construction industry, um, is that a supermoto? Um, so, this time of year, construction slows down. It is a supermoto. Uh, WR250F. You can't see it, probably. But, um, anyways. This time of year, construction slows down. Therefore, flatbedding can, can slow down because there's not too much rate to move. So, uh, I've pretty much always pulled flatbed, so I'm pretty used to that. Uh, and as a local driver, also, I don't know, I've never been over the road, so I can't speak to that. I don't know how much it might slow down for over the road drivers. Um, so, you have to find somebody else's uh, blog there for, for info as it pertains to driving over the road, flatbeds or whatever. Um, so anyways, just wanted to give you that update that uh, 
even though it's a nice beautiful sunny day out it is that time of year where flat bedding slows down and it, for now I'm at least deadheading 50 miles or so down to the Tacoma area South Seattle Tacoma somewhere in there and I'll text her again and uh, see what's up and then potentially going all the way back to our yard empty um, so I got a load uh, I, I guess I didn't just leave been on the highway for a half hour or so. Um, I picked up a load in Tacoma that delivers down in Vancouver in the morning. So, yeah. Um, now I'm just on the highway headed for Alma, I-5 South. Uh, it's 2.56, so uh, 3 in the evening. I'm just going by, for those of you in the area, I guess I don't want to tell but <laughs> The 99, exit mile marker 99, there's a pilot for Flying J right there. Just went past it. Um, heading south. I should be back to the yard according to my GPS about 440. Probably take me a little longer. I'll pull over um, at a rest area or something. Because um, I want to eat some with Chicago blend popcorn and I can't reach it. So, I should have, I meant to put it like right down on the floor next to me um, before I left where I was picking up, but I didn't think about it. Um, until once I was on the highway and then it was like, dang it, I wanted that within reach. So, the only thing I got within reach is my uh, dried fruit and nut mix, which is all I've eaten today.